we take a look at some of the most advanced facilities in the world. At number 7 is Super Kamio Kande. This incredible facility is studying neutrino and proton decay from the sun, supernova, and atmosphere. It is located 3,000 feet below the surface in Haida, Kamayoko, Japan. And this is to prevent outside interference including cosmic radiation. It contains a very large tank, roughly 130 feet high, which can hold over 50,000 tons of water. The tank is surrounded by photomultiplier tubes, which detect neutrino interactions with electrons, which actually move faster than light in water. This creates what is called Cherenkov radiation, and the tubes read the direction and energy of the neutrino. Neutrinos are a type of elementary particle which are actually smaller than an atom, and they have no electrical charge. One of the most fascinating discoveries was that neutrinos actually have mass, and that they can change between different states. And the facility was able to distinguish these different states of neutrinos coming from different sides of the Earth. Now the facility is being upgraded to detect supernova neutrinos, and this will help us understand basic matter and where it comes from. At number 6, the Snow Lab. Yes, we do get a lot of snow in Canada, so this name is quite suitable, but it actually stands for the Sudbury Neutrino Observatory. It is located several kilometers below the surface, so it has some of the lowest cosmic ray muon fluxes in the world, and naturally this allows the facility to incorporate some of the most advanced neutrino detectors. The Snow Plus is one of these weird contraptions, and it consists of heavy water enveloped inside of regular water. Similar to the device in Japan, this volume is monitored by light detectors, so if any neutrinos interact with electrons in the sphere, it will emit light, and the Snow Plus will detect it. Once again, the goal is to understand how neutrinos have mass, and the possibility of neutrinos having the duality of both being an antiparticle and a normal particle. Another interesting project involves the DAP detector, which detects dark matter. And as you probably know, dark matter is the missing piece complementary to GR, and it would also explain why galaxies don't fly apart. This contains over 3 tons of argon, and once again light is detected from interactions with dark matter particles. So if dark matter is a real thing, then it would probably be discovered from this lab. Even if it doesn't detect anything, it could lead to another model such as quantized inertia, and I still think that's pretty fascinating. As to be expected, number 5 is Area 51. Shrouded in mystery, this military base is one of the most remote and secured installations on Earth. There have been a lot of claims and theories about what really goes on here, but we do know that some of the most advanced aircraft have been developed at this facility. This includes the SR-71, which can fly at a record speed of Mach 3.3, the F-117, which was a complex stealth aircraft with a sophisticated computerized avionics system, and finally there was the YF-118A, and this was surprisingly stable enough to be flown without computer correction. Now these are historical references, and what actually resides in Area 51 is highly debatable and this ranges from the ARA to the TR-3B. Now, I do find it interesting that nothing recent has been revealed from the base, so it does draw a lot of speculation on what is being developed there right now, but I still think that technologies are being developed here to some degree, because it is an excellent test bed and it's highly remote. That's number four, the National Ignition Facility. The world's largest and highest energy laser is located within this fascinating place. It is roughly the size of three football fields. 192 powered lasers are targeted into one localized area at 500 trillion watts of peak power for a fraction of a second. This generates temperatures of around 3.3 million Kelvin, and this forces hydrogen atoms in the target to fuse and release energy in a controlled thermal nuclear reaction. If the implosion is symmetrical and temperature in the center is sufficient enough, then alpha particles will spread through and heat the surrounding cold fuel, thus triggering a self-sustaining fusion reaction. The NIF has closed in on fusion ignition by altering laser particles and targets, and they hope to achieve a self-sustained burning plasma, which is the first step for creating fusion power. 
Now, there are the tokamak and stellarator fusion reactor designs, but there have been some really recent innovations which I highly recommend to check out. And these involve TAE's fusion power reactor, which utilizes a reversed field configuration. And this kind of acts like an engine and collides two plasmas into each other. And then this contraption heats the collision with particle beams. And there's also general fusion and their magnetized targeted fusion reactor, which uses magnetic fields to confine a lower density plasma. This is then heated and compressed to achieve fusion conditions. So there might be a couple of ways to achieve self-sustained fusion power. But this also leads us to another incredible place titled the Z Machine. Now this kind of sounds like something out of Nikola Tesla's lost inventions, but the Z Machine is real, and it's the world's most powerful and efficient laboratory radioactive source. It utilizes magnetic fields and electrical currents to produce high temperatures, pressures, and x-rays for research. It's over 30 meters wide and contains a giant array of capacitors, which provides over 20 million amps directed towards a tiny fuel source. The electrical current induces an overwhelming magnetic field, which pinches the target and forces hydrogen atoms to fuse into helium. However, certain mixtures of tritium and deuterium can release limited amounts of fusion energy. Ultimately, the Z machine could solve some of the mysteries associated with fusion power, and this may lead to a sustainable power source, but it can also be used for other purposes including particle and material research. Now number two, the ISS. One of the most advanced and remote research facilities is not even on Earth. And I certainly think that this is a foreshadowing of where classified projects can take place in the future. Almost 3,000 experiments have taken place on this space station, with most of them tied to microgravity effects. Some of the more intriguing and perhaps even weird experiments include drug developments using protein crystals, testing tissue chips in space which contain human cells, collecting data on cosmic rays, and even testing 3D printing techniques utilizing recycled materials. Now, one of the most amazing experiments involved a fifth state of matter in microgravity, called a Bose-Einstein condensate, which involves ultra-cold temperatures. Now, BECs are really interesting, and they exhibit properties which are typically displayed only by individual atoms, and it could shed some light on quantum mechanics and technologies such as ultra-precise sensors, which could detect things such as dark energy or gravitational waves. There is also the observation that a BEC acts as a superfluid, and it can actually exhibit negative mass. Now, it is highly probable that there is more research being put into this phenomenon than is publicly known. And it does explain how atomic composition and possibly orientation can lead to gravitational effects. Now, due to this microgravity effect, the ISS has provided longer observation times on this type of fifth matter. Ultimately, we do not really know for sure if it's exhibiting negative mass, and there's a lot of debate on whether or not that's even possible. But it is one very interesting phenomenon. That's the great number one, and probably the most predictable facility is CERN. The world's largest particle accelerator is a 27 km underground rain made from superconducting magnets. This rain is cryogenically cooled down to 1.9 Kelvin, and this propels bursts of protons around the entire rain at 11,000 times per second. These beams of protons are hurtled around in opposite directions until they collide with such force that they generate subatomic particles such as the Higgs boson. This facility helped prove that the Higgs field actually exists and that elementary particles have mass. CERN has also managed to produce and store small amounts of antimatter, which annihilates with normal matter, so to study these particles is very fascinating and challenging. Now, this is not to be confused with negative mass, which I stated earlier, but antimatter is very powerful stuff, and one gram of it can produce over 20 kilotons of energy. CERN has only produced roughly one nanogram of this stuff, but their new addition should allow for capturing and transporting the mystical matter to another facility. Ultimately, CERN will stand as one of the most important and incredible research facilities in the world for many years to come. So once again, thanks for watching. Please like the video if you enjoyed it and also make sure to subscribe to my channel.